we're into more of it now and we're um you know we're getting better at it you know just to open up different avenues you know to make ourselves successful so touring clothing and touring also and, uh, and movies uh publishing uh you know just I don't want to compete with him, Steve. No, I'm not interested yet. <laughs> <laughs> but and then, then on uh, the, the tours, you are uh, wise enough or big enough or something where you don't mind sharing billing with Eminem or Bono. Yeah, it's, it's fun for me, for one, and for two, like we were saying in the car, like, you know, one plus one is three for me. You know, I don't have that ego where I, you know, I have to be the only guy on the bill or the only one that people look at. You know, I'm 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 cool with going out um, with other with other artists. I've been doing it my entire career. You know, before Eminem, before Bono, it was you know R. Kelly and or 50 Cent or you know uh, DMX. You know, I've been doing it my entire career. I just believe that you know the the giving people a better package. You know that when they leave the concert hall, they want to come back again. You know, you can get them there the first time. You know, if what you're putting on is not incredible and um, impactful, then how they, why would they come back the second time? You know, I think that's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people make that mistake, you know, when they're hot at the moment. You know, they just sell them, you know, they, 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 they sell off the name and sell off the moment. Yeah, that, the shiny things. You fall in love with right. shiny things. You sell off the moment, and then when people come to the concert, they don't have the experience. Well, we're over-delivering on the experience. You know, you're not only getting Eminem, you're getting Eminem and Jay-Z. You're not only getting Bono, you're getting Bono and Jay-Z. You can't help but leave that um, concert, you know, with a, almost like a once-in-a-lifetime experience every single time. That's what I'm trying to create. But, well, Warren, you said you wouldn't want to compete against Jay, uh, what advice would you... He's super duper joking. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. what, what, what advice would you have for a, a man who's succeeded in a business where it's often short-lived, being convulsed? Uh, how, how do you, you like to have businesses where you say there's a moat where the competitors can't get you? Hmm. What advice would you give on Jay get building moats? Well, he's building moats, I mean, all the time. I mean, obviously, uh, and that's why he's succeeding, even though he's moved beyond the age that you normally associate his field with. So uh, the best moat you can have is your own talent. You know, I mean, it's, they, can't, they can't take it away from you. They, inflation can't take it from you. Right. Taxes can't take it from you. So I, I, when I talk to students, I see these students and I tell them, you know, you're a million dollar asset. I would pay you $100,000, the MBAs, for 10% of the earnings for the rest of your life. So that makes you a million dollar asset. Now, if you can do something to increase that value 50%, if you can learn to communicate better verbally or in written form, and you become 50% more, that's $500,000 just by improving yourself. I mean, not, nobody can take that away from you. And, and so I urge everybody, you know, when they're, I talk to them in high school about this and, 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 and colleges, just do, develop, develop the habits. You've got the brain power, you've got the energy, but develop the habits of success. And, and look around you at the people that you admire, you know, and list what makes you admire them compared to somebody else that looks equally strong or equally uh, talented. And those are, those are things that you can do. I mean, just write them down. And, and, and uh, you know, people like people that are, they're, they like them if they're, if they're humorous, if they're friendly, if they're, if they're uh, if they give credit to the other fellow, I mean, uh, and, and they don't like them if they're stingy, you know, or they overstate and overpromise and all those sort of things. Well, that's a decision, that's a decision you make. So, so I, I encourage everybody to build your own moat around yourself. Jay, you have any like, advice you want to give to Warren on building moats? Uh, I mean, what am I going to say to this guy, man? <laughs> <laughs> he can do things I can't do, believe me. I can't do anything. <laughs> Brilliant thinker. <laughs> well, this uh, then gets uh, to uh, what is money for? You've, uh, you've greatly succeeded. You haven't made the mistakes that others made. You get a success, and then you let destroy your discipline. Uh, in terms of uh, there are only so many steaks we can eat, or hamburgers, or whatever. Uh, the, the value added. We'll start with you, Warren. Maybe we can start this part of the conversation. The value added you always had was you could employ capital multiply it, which meant more businesses, more uh, 
people for pensions, more hiring. Uh, that was a great uh, service. I was doing a real public good. Yet a few years ago, you decided uh, you were going to do something in, in addition to multiplying capital, which meant opportunity and a higher standard of living. Well, Steve, if you go back, really when I was in my 20s, I mean, I, I, it sounds obnoxious, but I really did know I was going to become rich. I mean, because <laughs> I just, I'd learned something that, that was going to work. And, and uh, my wife and I decided then, I mean, she was 100% on board, my first wife, and, and, uh, on this, and we, we were going to enjoy life. We were going to have everything possibly use or need. But incidentally, I, I think a $5 dinner in many cases is better than a $100 dinner. So same I don't, same I think with I, wine, too. Yeah, cost of living and, and standard of living are not necessarily the same. But I thought I would compound money at a rate above, well above average. And, and, and we decided we'd live well. We never denied ourselves anything. It meant independence so I could do what I wanted to do. And, 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 and then I felt one way or another we'd uh, it, it, it would go back to society. Now, I thought my wife would outlive me. She was a little younger, and women live longer than men. And she, she loved the actual process of, of seeing people with problems that money would help. And I loved, I loved the game I was in. So I thought we would, you know, basically we'd pile it up, and she would do the distribution of it. And, and she did a lot of it while she was alive, but the big money was going to be later on. And then she died while I was still alive, and then I had to make a decision as to the best way to get this money spent in an intelligent way, relatively promptly, uh, and I came up with the idea of splitting among five foundations, the largest of which is the Gates Foundation. And that was four years ago, and I couldn't be more pleased with the decision. I haven't denied myself anything. I mean, I, I, I eat everything I want. I travel any place I want. Have, have, have you denied society something, that the capital, if you keep employing it, might have done more good? In well, uh, the, the Berkshire's still around. I'm still running it. I mean, I, 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 yeah, you're not I'm, doing so I'm, bad. I, I'm, making, I'm, making, I'm making it still for the, the charities, but I'm making it for a lot of other people, yeah. too. You know, I, so I didn't have to give up anything. I didn't, even, you know, I didn't have to give up what I love doing every day. I didn't have to give up any material thing in the world. And, and my three children are each involved with a foundation, which lets them put money behind their energies. And no, I think it, it's really worked out wonderfully for me. I mean, it's a, been a perfect solution. And, you know, when my wife was pregnant, I didn't think I was going to deliver a baby, you know. And, and you know, if I get a, a toothache or something, I don't take out my own tooth. I, I turn it over. I, I follow Adam Smith's advice, you know. I turn it over to a specialist. And there's no reason to think that because I'm good at making money that I would be the best necessarily at, at distributing it. I, I, I want certain goals in terms of how it's distributed, but I'm perfectly willing to turn it over to people who are going to spend their lives specializing in that. I want them to get it done promptly. Uh, and I want it to be in sync with the kind of things I want to I, I support, but I don't think I have to do it myself. Now, uh, in terms of that, uh, many times a foundation gets set up, and it uh, uh, goes thing off called, in a different direction. And, 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 and uh, there's a thing called Parkinson's Law that an organization becomes self centered in for itself and forgets its purpose that it was created for. I see it all uh, the time. And uh, you see it in business. That's why they go broke oftentimes. But in foundations, you see it. So you uh, made a provision that that was not going to happen with your funds. Yeah. They, they had to be, those monies had to be employed, what, within 10 years? 10 years after my, my state's completed, yeah. And, and the money has to all be spent. It can't go to institutions which, in turn, put it in their endowment or anything like that. I, I want people that I know and I, I know are in sync with me and I know will be true to certain ideals I want them to dispense it because who the hell knows 50 years from now, you know, when the place becomes some large institution, what will happen? People will rationalize then that what's good for the institution is exactly what old Warren thought, you know, 40 years ago on his deathbed. So I've seen that happen too often. And, and uh, uh, now I, the foundations are not tested by a market system. I mean, if, if you've got a business idea and he's got music, it's being tested by a market system. By the, People will make a decision with whether that next next album is good, and they'll make a decision, you know, on, on whether Coca-Cola still keeps them happy and all that sort of thing. A foundation has no market test, so it's very easy if there's not a market test, as people will find out in government and other places. It's very easy to start rationalizing things that are a long way from what you originally people thought you were setting out to do. And uh, you were in terms of uh, you're just beginning uh, looking at uh, charities. And uh, you have a very unusual one, uh, scholarship fund, Sean Carter Scholarship Fund, 
Describe it and where do you think 